right, so today we're going to be covering creative character design concepts. So the idea behind this topic is more or less to talk about how to make, um, to either generate ideas for your character designs um, or to um, push them farther, right? So whenever you have a design, a lot of times people will tell you, to, uh, whoever you're making it for will tell you to push it. And what they mean by that is to like go farther than where you're currently at. Um, otherwise, you're doing realism. And so a really good example of this is character. Caricature, if you read my writing here, is a pictorial, written, or active representation of a person which exaggerates his or her characteristics uh, for comic effect, okay? So generally, um, a caricature is going to uh, think about three things, typically, right? So one is likeness. It should look like what it's meant to represent. Uh, so if I'm trying to make a dog character, I should recognize it as being a dog, right? Or if I'm trying to make a character that's meant to represent a person, it should look like that person. You should be able to recognize it as what it is. Um, the next part is exaggeration. This is the most obvious thing. So the idea is that um, you're departing from reality. You're not doing an absolute uh, visualization of what it is. Otherwise, that would just be a, fo a photograph that you would take, right? Um, what we're actually looking to do is uh, exaggerate what we see, right? So if they have somebody with uh, like a long nose or big ears or big eyes or strong jaw, you go even farther with it, right? You push the parts that are already exaggerated. Usually you go farther with them, okay? And lastly, and to some extent, is the statement. Uh, basically, the idea is that you should editorialize. You're supposed to be making some sort of comment about the thing that you're drawing, right? So uh, if you were to look up a, a caricature of Hitler, right? All of the caricatures about him are generally going to be, um, are generally going to be uh, things that either make him look weak or pathetic or that sort of stuff because people just generally want to make him not look good, right? Uh, most of the time, when you look at uh, uh, caricatures of um, politicians, which is a really common thing of a caricature to do, uh, usually they're they're not positive things because people typically don't think very positively of politicians, which I think is pretty universal. Um, but it doesn't necessarily have to be that, you know, um, when you editorialize something like you could take something and be like, you want to take something and you want to make it like super cute, you know what I mean? Or make it look super uh, muscly or make someone look really powerful or that sort of thing. Okay. All right. So obviously when I'm talking about most of this, usually when people think of caricatures, they think of this sort of thing here. Um, but this guy is awesome. This is uh uh, what's his name? Sebastian Kruger. He does these um, these drawings and these paintings of basically famous people. Some of these, I don't know who they are. Like, I don't know who Gustav Heinemann is or whatever. But you can see here's Jack Nicholson. I don't know who she is. Um, Eric Clapton, right? Uh, I think this might be Sharon Stone. I'm really not 100% sure. Um, but most of these guys up here, uh, um, sorry, Charles Bronson. Um, but you'll see he has these amazing asymmetrical designs, um, but he exaggerates features of them, uh, uh, like the, not just the features, not mean like just the nose or just the face or just the eyes. The whole entire form of the person is exaggerated, okay? Now, most of the time when we're making, let's say, an animated feature, um, the whole point of doing something animated as opposed to live action, because think about cartoons that you watch, right? Most of them... Uh, are probably still of people, right? So why animate it? One of the main reasons to do animation as opposed to a live action film is for the purposes of exaggeration, for caricature, right? What we can do is visually, we can represent things in a way, in a very succinct way, and push them farther than reality is, okay? So like if we have a bad character, we can make them even badder, right? Um, if we have a really strong character, let's say like Hulk, right? We can make him even bigger, bigger than life, right? So that's the main reason to really even do animation is that we can caricature the things visually, right? We, we, anything we can think of, we can create, okay? Uh, and most good design is going to use caricature, okay? So um, caricature for the most part means basically exaggeration, okay? Um, so you want to push your designs as far as you can. What you don't want to do is use... Um, is not have that okay so generally what that means when you're doing exaggeration it means basically making something bigger more pronounced 
and making something less pronounced. One thing can only be as big as something as small. So a great example, actually, is uh, Popeye. If you look at Popeye, right, he's generally a really strong character. Um, but if you actually look at his biceps, they're very small. But he has these huge forearms. In order to make his forearms look big and strong, it has to be next to something very small. And I think we talked about this in the last class. But the idea, like if you want to do a really strong character, right, it's not big arms. It's usually a big chest. Um, because you, And then usually little legs. There's no sense in having a big chest. If you have a big chest and you have big legs, the chest doesn't look big. It needs to be against something small. Um, so uh, same thing with Betty Boop here. Um, if you were to look at Betty Boop, she's both a good design and a bad design. Because if you took her head off, her body is generally somewhat proportionate, right? There's not a lot of exaggeration here. It's not really that interesting. Her head has a ton of exaggeration. It's a huge head on a woman's body. That creates interest. Um, another little note here I thought that was interesting with Betty Boop, who's like not an interesting character. But notice this little flip on her um, her dress. It's the same thing that's in her hair. See how they basically continue that 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 across all of them. And also her eyelashes and her um, eyebrows. There's this, uh, and even her fingers a little bit. There's that kind of continual re-represented shape that kind of makes the entire figure more congealed together. Um but yeah, you want to have exaggeration within the character design itself and not just from one character to another. A really common thing is that you'll see like a short and fat guy versus a tall and thin guy, right? That's a really common, and you've probably seen that a million times, right? Uh, or you'll have the funny person against the straight person. Um, but you want to actually, the secret to really good design is actually having the contrast in the designs themselves, right? Right, so he's got kind of a small waist. He's got these big feet. See how thin it is here and how big they are here? He's got thin uh, bicep, but really big forearms. You know, he's got this big chin, but kind of small eyes. Um, so it's, it's that exaggeration. There's a really nice article here you can click on that talks about silhouette. Um, exploration. Probably the biggest thing I would suggest uh, more than anything else is to do exploration. And what I mean by that is your first design is probably not your best design. Your best design is going to be more than likely your like hundredth design that you come up with. You should just keep drawing something over and over and over again until something kind of comes out of it. Okay. Obviously don't draw the exact same thing. You try to change it a little bit every time you draw it and hopefully you come up with a new idea because I can give you a bunch of different methods that are creative ideas. I'm doing air quotes right now. That would give you, you know, oh, if you do this, it'll make the design better. And you do this, it'll make the design better. But those are not truly creative because they're process, right? True creativity is basically stuff we've never seen before. It's, it's novel, right? It's innovative. It's different, um, but intriguing and appealing. Um, the only way to really get there is just to keep pushing yourself. Because not only will it allow you to come up with new and different designs, it'll actually also, actually also help formulate your personal style that will carry you through your career. Um, so an interesting example of this is actually frogs, right? You could take anything. You could take bears, but I'm just going to use frogs here. A frog, right? So when you think of a frog, a frog ha is green, right? Okay. Well, these are green. This one's not green. And this one's not green. I know this is a toad, but still. Right? So you think green. Okay, so that's not true. I've seen plenty of frogs that aren't green that we've seen, right? Oh, long legs. Well, these one's got long legs. His legs aren't particularly long. They're kind of long. His are not. His are definitely not, right? Um, they've got those weird eyes, right? So he's got kind of those eyes that kind of don't. No. You know what I mean? Uh, they should have a big mouth. Well, they actually all have big mouths, so that was a bad example. But um, but you can see these are all distinctly different. Like these designs, one design from the next one are completely different, right? But we all instantly recognize them as frogs. So one of the things I find interesting with like graphic design and character design is that you will see the same thing. Like I could see a design of a teddy bear and I could see someone completely reinvent it and come up with a new design that's been drawn. You've seen it drawn a million times and it's something I've never seen before. Like they're able to remake something so many times and it's just, it's, I don't know, I find it remarkable. Okay. Um, what I would say when you are trying to come up with design, if you want to come up with something that's truly unique and different is don't take the obvious thing, right? Like if I'm going to do a pig or something, you could exaggerate, just make them really big and fat and round and it would be cute and it would be funny, but it's obvious. You know what I mean? Um, if I was going to do a frog, right? Don't give them really long legs. Maybe give them small legs. That would be different. You know what I mean? Like do something 
don't take the obvious route because that's not novel. That's been done a million times. Do something that's different. That's what's going to separate your designs from other people. Um, some other things you can do is that if you are um, if you are going to create a human character, um, and you'll see this a lot of times with um, especially animated humans, don't. Whenever you create a character, you want to have a foundation in something. One of the things you can do to help them have a foundation is to actually use an animal as your inspiration for the character, right? So um, you can think of a bunch of different examples of this. But basically, you give them those animals, both in their design, the drawing of them, and also their movements and their mannerisms and their their thought processes. You can give them a sort of uh, feeling of that. Comic book character is obviously a pretty good example. If you look at Spider-Man, he kind of moves around like a spider. He doesn't really look like a spider so much. Um, but usually, uh, often you'll see comic book characters, they'll, they'll take whatever they're, like Wolverine, right? He's supposed to be mean like a Wolverine. They'll actually take what the animal is and try to infuse it into the character. Um, and sometimes their, their outfits will have that, but I'm saying you can go even farther with that and like have a character and be like, you know, this character supposed to be this really, you know, sluggish, big, mean, whatever. And I'd be like, I'm going to take a gorilla and actually make the character look a little bit like a gorilla and infuse that into the character. Um, you know, or there's supposed to be somebody who's like, who's not trustworthy. And so what I'll do is I'll take like a weasel and make the character, like if it's a human, I'm saying, and make him look a little bit more weaselly. But that works really well as well. Um, and you can actually go the other way also. And you, they definitely, you, I mean, I can show you a million examples of this. But basically, if you have a human character, you can take the human, or I'm sorry, if an animal character, you can take a human and infuse that into the character. Okay, so um, actually take the design of the person and try to make the the um, animal look a little bit like that person. It's really super common you'll see in animated features because they'll take whoever the actor is and then make them look like, like this kind of looks like Will Smith, right? I guess this kind of looks like Jack Black, not that much. Um, this obviously looks like, um, uh, not Al Pacino, who's the other guy? Um, Robert De Niro, right? kind of doesn't really either but that's obviously what they were going for um this is a little cheap and obvious so i wouldn't really do that personally and obviously it was a terrible movie anyway but um you could definitely see how it's really you can see that's what they did um but you can take any movie and you can see definitely how they took the the um the person and that end up influencing design but it doesn't have to be as explicit as that if you're coming up with a design and it's like i'm supposed to do this character and it's like this duck or something but the duck is like just a jerk then I I would like personally I would do like my neighbor I'd make that duck look my my neighbor and then be like yeah because that my neighbor's a total jerk right so then that will help inform it because my generally things look like what they are as much as you're not supposed to judge a book by a cover but like my neighbor looks like a jerk and so I was like that's how I would make that duck so I would do basically the same idea if there's somebody you hate and detest. You can use that and like put them into it. Or let's say there's like this person who's always just been so nice and, you know, it's just this great person. Um, you could do the same thing. Um, so texture, basically texture is just to break up the shape. Generally it means just um, sort of repeating a pattern or noise to help make it um, more interesting. Um, yeah, you get the idea. Uh, style. This is a big thing that I find that students will lean on a little bit. Um, and I don't mean actual style. I mean process drawing. So sometimes I've had people or students who will be like, they'll draw a character or something. And all their characters have one eye big and one eye small. And they go, well, that's my style. That's not a style. That is, um, that is just a thing that you're drawing. Style is not... The repetition of the same elements it's how you're drawing those elements so kind of a good example actually is gorillas if you like gorillas i like gorillas gorillas right very strong style um interesting style um great character designs let me find one that's like kind of the old school one so you get a better idea these ones are a little bit i don't like this more realistic uh, here we go we'll go with this one all right so if we look at this picture yeah, okay. Well, we'll just look at this. If you look at this picture, right, you can tell this is all a style. But you can be like, oh, well, I draw the eyes and they don't have pupils. Well, yeah, he doesn't, but he does, right? Oh, well, they're white. His are yellow, right? Well, I draw a nose and it's like this kind of stubby nose thing right here. Well, his has it, but he don't, right? Um, and you can be like, oh, well, I draw the hair this way. Well, he doesn't even have hair. You know what I mean? So you don't, 
it's not about like, oh, I always draw the eyes like I've completely filled them in black. That is not a style. That's just a thing that you're drawing over and over again. Okay. Um, what makes a style, really style is something you're going to kind of develop. It's more the way that you're drawing it and the overall design, how it's being um, developed, right? So you can see these are the three different things. I just randomly found these, but, you know, this is Wolverine. This is, uh, what's that guy's name? Willie. Can't think of it. It's Groundskeeper Willie. Groundskeeper Willie and um, Darth Vader, right? Well, these are all done in a Van Gogh style. It's more about how they were created and less about, um, man, my dog won't stop. Um, uh, and less about the, um, what they're drawing, right? Because I'm not like, I didn't like, oh, well, I draw this ear here and then I draw this ear. That's not a style, okay? Appeal. So, peel basically doesn't mean cute, lovable, infantile, cuddly. What it means is that it's interesting to look at. You don't even actually have to like what you're looking at. It actually just means you want to look at it. Uh, and that's actually very important in order for people, in order for you to, you're trying to draw people in, right? I mean, that's to a large extent, a lot of times what you need to do. There's a couple of ways to go about doing this. One thing you can do, well, there's a lot of things you can do about it. Um, the two most obvious things that are pretty universal, one is sex and the other, every, I'm saying things that everyone likes. One is sex and the other one is um, cute, like babies, right? Because we're naturally genetically pre-exposed to desire those things, right? Because we, we need to take care of babies and we need to make babies, right? So we got to do those two things. So sex is one thing you can do, but what you will notice is, generally speaking, um, people do not like making sexy characters because it goes from being like something that's that's uh, approachable for all populations to you know you kind of cut out family stuff, right? So you typically don't see a lot of sexy characters, um, and also, you know, depending on what you're doing, right? You can see these are all female examples, right? Because I'm a dude, but, well, I'm a heterosexual dude, I should say, more specifically. Um, so these are examples that I would use. Uh, but obviously, I'm, I'm automatically cutting out, like, a good percentage of people, right? Probably 50% of the population, uh, depending on, I don't know how people work now, but you know what I mean? So um, it's, 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 it's not a broad thing that's going to cover all spectrums, and generally people are a little less comfortable with it. So typically what you end up seeing... Oh, I lost this image. Okay. Typically, you end up seeing are cute characters, right? So, like, Dumbo or these minion guys or um, a great example, actually, are um, Pokemon, right? They're kind of just... Let's see. Uh, let's grab this one. That's kind of big. Okay. Um, but everybody likes cute. It's an easy thing to do, and typically... And because animation end up going the route of for children, it's obviously it's diverted that way now. But there was a long period of time. The longevity of the of the um, the medium, the animated medium, has been for children. Uh, but now, obviously, with more adult video games and um, more adult animated features and movies and and what have you, um, we have diverted from that. But cute is pretty universal. People. You know, you see a duckling, and you're like, that's adorable, I want to cuddle it, right? Right off the bat. Most of the time, what that means, though, is you create, like, this round design, round, circle design. And Pokemon are a great example of that. Pokemon are circles and throw crap on it, right? All these things, like, circle, throw a lightning bolt on it, right? Circle, put some wings on it, right? Circle, put a whatever tulip-looking thing on it, right? Um circle and whatever this stuff is right circle and a mean grinny face it's just circles on circles on circles it's all pokemon are they're actually really bad character sign i know you're like i'm not pokemon don't get me wrong i love their tagline gotta catch them all there's no way like that's exactly like yeah gotta buy them all like it's great i'm not saying whoever came up with it genius but still terrible anyway uh so q is typically the way that people like to go but if you want to create something truly great, something truly good, novelty, right? Novelty just means that something new, something people haven't seen before, something interesting, uh, innovative, different, right? When people see that, it stands out. It's interesting. It's a billion. Like, wow, that is weird. I've never seen that before. That's so interesting. It doesn't even have to be like great most of the time. 
Um, but if it's novel, uh, people will enjoy it so much more, right? So one of the reasons why I'm not a big I'm not a big anime kind of person, but I do like Miyazaki films because they're just they're so far out there, so much, so they're so different. The worlds are so imaginative, like a cat bus, right? That's weird. That's different. I've never seen that before. That's strange, and I love it. I hate cats, and I don't really like buses either. But put them together, and for some reason, you know, it's just, it, it, it works. Um, but when you see that sort of thing, novelty, when something's different, it doesn't even need to be something that they enjoy. They will like it. I, I use the example all the time, but, like, if I – let's say that I uh, you really like green jelly beans. If I give you a green jelly bean, you be like, mmm, good. I give you another one, be like, yeah, awesome. I give you another one, be like, yeah, keep it coming. But by the time I got to the hundredth one, you wouldn't really like the green jelly beans as much. If I give you a red jelly bean, you'd be like, well, I don't like red jelly beans. I guarantee you, after the hundredth jelly bean, you would kind of like it just because it was different. It was novel. All right. Um, some other things to do when you are coming up with your designs. I must have used this twice. Bad on me. Um, is a uh, line of action. Basically, what that means is it's the line that goes through the meat of a character. So for instance, if you look at these two examples here, if it's a straight line, this is kind of boring. It's very flat. This is much more dynamic, right? It makes your eye move in a more of a curved manner. It's much more interesting. Um, so you, the idea is it's just the flow through the body. Don't create poses that are straight uh, or uninteresting. Um, so some things people typically do for uh, characters is that they'll create a character model sheet. And more or less, it's a sheet. It's actually usually multiple sheets. Um, and it tells you how to draw the character. Um, generally, how they, what the character is capable of, like how much squash and stretch. Um, any kind of rules that need to apply to the character. Um, uh, if there's a construction model, how to draw around that character. Uh, so, for instance, here's a construction model of like a Simpsons character. They will use um, primitive conceptual um, objects. So that it makes it easier to draw the character spatially, uh, and it makes it easier to repeat the character across, um, both for the purposes of animating across the entire scene, as well as for multiple people to be able to draw it consistently. Okay, uh, turnaround sketch is when you draw the character in a turnaround, so you can see them from multiple angles, so you know how to draw them. Character lineup is basically when you have all of your characters and you draw them next to each other. Um, this is important even for three D. Actually, so is this one for that matter. Um, because uh, it lets you know what the scale of one character is to another. They do the same thing with props. Um, action poses. A lot of the early model sheets were actually only action poses. Um, and uh, you were just supposed to kind of figure out how to draw from there. Uh, but they give you a better idea of what the, uh, um, the character's uh, personality and what have you. Um, okay, so that is that stuff. And the last thing I'm going to cover here is simple rigging. I'm not going to expect you guys to do that right now, but... Um, basically, uh, rigging is taking, right now you have a 3D model, right? And it's just a static, solid model that you can rotate and move, but you can't actually, like, flex it, right? You can't bend an arm or move or animate it in any sort of way. Um, rigging allows you to put the various things that will allow the model to bend, right? So, so, he, can, so he or she can, like, bend her elbows or her knees or her waist and, you know, flex around, um, twist and what have you. Um, as well as give you the controls to do, to make those things happen. Uh, it can be relatively complicated. Um, usually the first thing you end up doing is you will prep the model. So you will look for basically mistakes that whoever modeled the model, be it you or somebody else, you look for those mistakes. Cause once you start rigging, you can't really fix them so easy. Um, then you will put the skeleton in there, which is, um, it works like a skeleton that you expect in a human body. When the skeleton moves, the uh, model will move. More or less, the model will be, in essence, sort of attached to the skeleton. Okay. Um, when you're placing joints, this is generally the rules that you're going to think about when you're placing them. Um, you want to generally place them in the center of the mass, right? So you see this halfway in between, right? So in the center of it. Um, and also, you want them to be where the points of articulation are going to be. Um, I have a video on here on how to do the human IK model, but I'm not expecting you guys to do that. But if you did want to rig it, that's how you would do it. Um, and we're not doing this assignment, but anyway. So uh, there you go.